Is the new Italian government on a collision course with the European Union? What will the populist government mean for the already high deficit that Italy has? Well, Darvel Joshi joins us now from BCA Research. Is it just a question of saying who's going to be the winner here? I mean, what are the, what are the details? Well, I mean, there's two sort of opposing sco schools of thought. Um, so basically, the populists are saying uh, we need to boost growth with deficit spending. Whereas the EU rules, let's say Brussels, are basically saying, no, you've got to rein in the deficit because that's part of the sort of fiscal compact uh, and you can't break the rules. So that, that, those are the two opposing camps. And I would actually say that in the case of Italy, a bit of deficit spending would actually be a good thing, you know, if, it, if it's contained. We're not talking about sort of really sort of, you know, going for it and going for a sort of 6% deficit, but sort of a some modest deficit spending would be a good thing. Um, so whether they did this intentionally or not, I think that um, the populists have come out with actually a reasonably sensible economic proposal if they sort of water down some of their more extreme um, rhetoric. Uh, so in this sense, um, Italy is right and Brussels is wrong. Hmm. I think just to sort of elaborate on that, the point is that um, Italy has, has been in a sort of prolonged stagnation for 10 years, very little growth really since the financial crisis of 2008. And the reason is, and there's very strong empirical evidence for this, is that the banking system has been bust for so long. Everyone else fixed their banks pretty quickly, the UK, the US, then we had Iceland, Ireland, Spain uh, most recently, but Italy just did not fix its banking system. And therefore, this is a, the, the main reason why growth has stagnated, because prior to 2008, Italy's growth was actually OK. It was nothing spectacular, but it wasn't that bad. It's only after 2008, and that's because the banks haven't been fixed. And in this situation, deficit spending or fiscal stimulus is very, very powerful when, when, when the banking system or the private sector isn't working normally. So in that sense, a bit of stimulus would be good. Um, you, you've got one, one chart um, you've got in there called fiscal thrust has driven Italy's growth in recent years. What is fiscal thrust? Is that what you've just been outlining? Or is, what, what makes up this, this fiscal thrust? Uh, in simple terms, it's sort of governments borrowing to spend. That's what fiscal thrust is. And the converse is, you know, fiscal drag is when you force governments to um, engage in austerity. So what we're saying is that that was very effective in uh, fiscal thrust or, you know, the, um, government spending um, to boost the economy was very effective in every single economy immediately after the financial crisis in 2008. So the bigger your stimulus, the, big, the quicker your recovery. And then more recently, it hasn't really worked. It, it, it is irrelevant in places like the UK, US, mm. and so on. It's just irrelevant because the private sector is working. But in, in Italy, it is still very relevant. So the, the austerity is much more harmful because the banking system isn't working in Italy. Mm. What, is, what does the bond market tell us about where Italy is at the moment? Because yields aren't as high as one might expect, are they? Um, yeah, so I don't think we're at sort of panic levels. So if you look at, for example, the, uh, the two-year bond yield, um, it's barely above zero. So the long-term chart, you know, um, you can see it was obviously very high during the debt crisis. Mm -hmm. It got up to sort of around 8%, and it's been in a long decline, and recently sort of ticked up a bit, but it's a minor, minor tick. So we shouldn't get too, you know, too worried. And even the 10-year bond yield at, um, I think it's around 2.4% at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, in the long-term sort of picture, it's actually very low. And remember that the U.S. 10-year is at three, mm, mm. so the Italian bond yield is still lower than in the U.S. So we're not we're not at sort of you know level we should be panicking about. How is it going to? Um, how is Italy going to stir growth? I mean, it needs growth uh, to overcome the debt issues, or it's got to address, address the debt issues directly. How is it going to get growth? Because that's a good way out of the the, the problems it's got. Um, well, the thing is that. What, what happens is if the, if the private sector is not working, and let's say you have um, people saving money, and those aren't channeled back into the economy, then the economy shrinks because there's money just disappearing. So in that situation, you have to get uh, the public sector to, you know, uh, mopping up these sort of excess savings and spending them effectively. So it's really about, you know, if the government spends intelligently, um, these excess savings, then you, you can get a bit of modest growth. So it's really about, um, as I say, it's about intelligent um, fiscal stimulus and modest 
intelligent fiscal stimulus. That's, has, that's really the key for Italy. And has that got to come from the, the new government? Or how much, of in, how much involvement is the EU going to have in the fortunes of Italy? If Italy plays by the EU rules, it's part of the big family. And one might expect the EU to assist Italy somehow as indeed has been the case in the past. Um, if the government turns out to be anti antagonistic against the EU, that might be a very different story. Um, will the EU have a part to play in Italy's uh, growth and, and the new uh, the outlook for the, for the economy? Yes, if you think about it, um, the worst thing for the EU is to turn the Italian population against the EU. Um, so. And also that's very bad for the Italian bond market because the re one of the reasons that Italian bond deals um, could go up is because people start to worry about Italy leaving, in which case you get a redenomination risk. You know, you're saying, I'm not going to get paid back in euros anymore, I'm going to get paid back in a different currency. And that obviously pushes up um, the yields on Italian bonds. So a little bit of, you know, I think, it, you know, it's in, it's in the EU's interest not to push back aggressively. And it's in Italy's interest not to tone back some of its really aggressive rhetoric, anti-EU rhetoric. And I think that maybe if, there's, if we get some sort of compromise, that's going to be the sort of best situation for both parties. So they've, you know, if you look at the coalition, they've put out this 58-page document. It's like their sort of opening position, in my opinion. And where they end up might be sort of a watered-down version of it, a bit like Brexit, where Theresa May came out, you know, all guns blazing, saying we were not going to pay a divorce bill. Um, you know, the Irish border question, don't worry about it, we'll come up with a solution. She was sort of quite bold and brazen, but, you know, gradually it's been watered down. Um, and I think that's what's going to happen in terms of some of the more extreme proposals. Mm. Uh, and so far as the Italian people are concerned, I guess they're not too worried or do know too much about the amount of debt that Italian banks carry. It, how serious is the Italian banking crisis and the amount of debt that they've got on their books? How serious is that to jeopardising the whole plan? Um, well, the thing is, the <coughs> Italian banks are just being gradually brought, brought back to solvency and health. Um, so they're sort of in this re recuperation phase. They've been taken out of intensive care. They're in the sort of that they're still a bit ill, let's put it that way. There, there were good earnings recently from Italian banks, it has to be said, but they still do carry this debt. Well, it's, not, it's, it's also the NPLs, you know, the non-performing yeah. loans. Um, yeah. They don't have enough equity compared to other banking systems. And so that's gradually improving. And, and from a very depressed level, of course, yes, earnings do bounce very sharply because you, th you thought these were sort of basket cases. They've, they've come out of that. Um, but the point is, um, like any sort of banking system, you'd own a lot of bonds in your, of your local economy. So um, Italian banks own um, 350 billion of Italian BTPs, Italian government bonds. Um, and if the value of those bonds drops sharply, mm -hmm. then the solvency of the banks comes into question again. So the calculation I did says, look, um, anything more than a 10% drop in the value of those bonds puts Italian banks into, you know, into, into trouble again. So that equates to, roughly speaking, by my calculation, a, you know, a further 2% rise in yields, to me, would be worrying. So if Italian bond yields get up to, say, you know, the 10-year gets up to around 4.5%, 4 then you're sort of getting into a sort of dangerous situation. Yeah. What's all this mean for euro dollar? We've got euro dollar chart here. This is a, a long term chart. It's a daily chart taking us back to the um, the days when we were at that low there back at the beginning of 2017 at uh, what was that 103. Here we are now having uh, lost a little bit of ground from the highs at uh, 125.80. We're now at 117.16. Um, What's been priced in for the Italian position within the EU at these sort of levels? Um, well, I think what wasn't priced in was a um, five-star movement Liga coalition. No one priced that in at the start of the year. So certainly some of the recent weakness has been an outcome that no one expected. Um, I think if, if, if they go push forward with the more, more aggressive proposals um, and actually escalate the battle, then I think there's, there's, you know, the, the support, there's, there's support for the euro um, technically at around 115. And that would be threatened, that support level would be threatened if there's escalation um, of this battle between the, 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 the populists and the EU. If there is some sort of compromise and some sort of watering down, 
Um, and both sides say, well, look, you know, yes, Italy does need a little bit of stimulus, but it can't be 6% of GDP, then I think we can sort of come off that sort of support, support level at 115. So that's really the key, mm. whether, the, whether we sort of de-escalate this sort of rhetorical tension mm. or we escalate. And I would actually say most likely we're, we're going to sort of, my, my central case is a de-escalation. Mm-hmm. That in, in other words, the coalition doesn't really have a massive majority anyway. Yeah. So they're going to come into line, basically. Well, it's going to be a bit of both, because I think the EU are going to give them a little bit of leeway right. and say, look, yes, you know, we understand that you do need a little bit more um, help from, from you know, government spending correctly, intelligently, but be sensible about it. Mm. Darvel, we've got to leave it there, but uh, thanks indeed for joining us. That's Darvel Joshi from BCA Research. Subscribe to IG for educational content, company insight, financial analysis and expert commentary.